Hi, back in September 2013, I reviewed these, my ASICS Gel Hunter 2s. And in particular, I looked at construction quality, lacing system, upper shoe, midsole and sole, shoe sizing, weight and the comfort. Well, just over seven years later and I'm back visiting them to see whether or not my opinion that these were an excellent shoe is still valid or if any of the concerns that I had about them, well, did they come true? Let's see. Welcome to Pathfinder Pro. Well, here's a little bit of a background on these shoes to put everything into perspective. I used these really for the first three years, so that's about 2013 to 2016. I then had about a 12 month period where I was out injured due to back surgery. And then when I came back, I didn't play much table tennis. I focused a lot more on coaching. So I've easily had over 3000 hours use out of these Gel Hunter 2s. The floors that these have come into contact with, typically they've been leisure center floors or school hall floors, or they've been lino at the church venue that I played at for quite a few years for Jacobius. And mainly they've been used at the Preston Table Tennis Center, which uses a girl floor floor which is purpose-built for table tennis and sprung. Again, you've seen that floor quite often in the videos that I made for Preston Table Tennis Association. In 2019, I stopped using these table tennis shoes and use them mainly for general wear, around the house, going for little walks, sometimes driving, mainly in the summertime. And the reason for that, well, it's got something to do with these, the soles. So what do I think of them seven years after first reviewing them? Let's find out. Construction quality. Originally when I reviewed these shoes, I was a little bit concerned about some of the stitching, but the finishing could be a little bit better. And by that I mean you can see at the ends of the actual stitching here, it's not actually flush to the surface of the shoe. And also about the blemish, and there seems to be a little bit of a a blemish on the inside of the shoe which I hope is just a blemish and it's not an actual tear or something that's going to cause a weakness in the shoe because I don't want the midsole and the soles separating that's not going to be a good situation to have with these shoes well seven years later and there's not been one break in the stitching in these shoes not the double stitching or even on the single stitching along where this blue logo is for the ASICs is and the shoe integrity Again, no problems. That's pretty solid. Not separated, not split, no nothing. And that lovely blue ASICS logo, again, there's been no problem with any of the stitching, no breaks. It's the same on the tongue as well. And that's also the same for the left shoe and the ASICS logo, which you can see down there. This really is impressive. And that white rubber solution that I referred to back in the first video in 2013, along where the sole or the upper part of the sole meets the midsole on the shoe. Well, again, no deterioration that, no breaks, solid, really good quality. The only sign of any weakness in this midsole section of the shoe is here. If you can see that where the shoe bends when I'm walking. And there's just across here, a rip or a tear or a cut or something that's cut the leather or synthetic part of the shoe and has got into the meshing as well. And what about the inside of the shoe? Back in 2013, I was concerned about the, the flap on the inside. If I turn it round for you, inside there, that's a flap of material which is quite foam like and the concern is that over time with my foot going in and out, in and out, that's going to get pulled back and pulled back and eventually it's either going to tear free of the stitching or it will tear itself. Uh, so a bit of a concern, I wish that was a little bit stitched nearer the edge and a little bit flusher to the actual shoe. As you can see now, there is no tearing, no loose stitching. Everything here as it was seven years ago. That stitching on the inside there is still intact. But that's the right foot. Have a look at the left foot. 
Can you see a difference? There. As opposed to there on the right. That's the left foot again. And as I'm right footed, and I'm more likely to be lunging into the table to take a short ball with that right foot, that's the heel that I would have expected to have felt pressure and friction from my own foot rubbing against it, trying to stop that right foot sliding too much. So that's bizarre. I'm not quite sure why that has occurred. But having said that, it's not a problem. It's not affected the the comfort or anything like that, it still feels feels good, feels solid. There's no break up on the heel area. And like I say, when you actually go down and look through the stitching all the way in, it's all there. That instep hasn't come away at all. But if you look closely as we move down the inside of both shoes, you can see white indentations on the insoles where the pressure and friction from my toes, especially the big toes, have worn away the top layer of that blue cloth again. And the indentations from my toes, if anything, they've helped the insole mould to my feet. So this hasn't been a problem, at least not for me. And I don't know if you noticed when the camera was moving down the insole, if you look at the size of the shoes, you can see how the lining has worn away in various places. But again, this wear hasn't affected the integrity of the inside of the shoe. It's still strong and intact. Nor has the wear had any effect on the outside of the shoe, nor their comfort. I can honestly say that from a construction point of view, these shoes have stood the test of time very, very well. And uh, yeah. I'm extremely happy with them. My verdict, love the construction on these shoes, really do. Lacing system and laces. ASICs say that these shoes have asymmetrical lacing with discrete eyelets. Well, whatever that means, all I can say is that I found these to be very, very comfortable in the way they lace up. And if you look at the eyelets, there's no actual tear anywhere. They're all still in one piece, nice and round, and the attached areas here, again, there's nothing loose in any of these shoes, not on the left, not on the right, and in the middle, there's a cloth area, the laces go through, again, all the stitching is intact on these. This lacing system it's very, very impressive and very comfortable. Good stuff, ASICs. And the tongue on these shoes, still got a nice bit of padding on that. Not a lot, but it's still quite nice and comfortable. No cuts or tears in that tongue at all. Not if you can see there, even with all the laces getting pulled and my feet moving around in it, nothing. No damage whatsoever. Mucky, yes. But what can I say? Over 3,000 hours use in these. What do you expect? Very, very good. Now you may also remember back in 2013, I mentioned about the shoelaces. Look at the Gel Hunter 2s. You can actually see, it's quite elasticated that, and it's also spongy. Well, they're not as elastic, and they're not as springy as they were back then but they're still intact, no nicks, no cuts, no tears on them anywhere. Even the ends of these shoelaces, look at that, absolutely amazing. That's the same ends, no fraying, no tearing, no ripping, and it's the same again on these left ones. Look at it, I've never known shoelaces last as well as this, seven years use. Really good stuff. But one thing that I did say about these laces is they were a little bit long. And because of that, when they were being tied, and I had to double tie these and still do, there's a chance of them getting caught underneath the foot. And that makes them potentially dangerous. Well, ASIC seemed to have learnt a lesson on that because these, these are my current table tennis shoe. Again, they're ASICs, and these are the Gel Extent. And yes, I know they are yellow and quite luminous yellow, but that's done for a reason. 
You remember Jim Clegg? Various people have various ideas. I have mine. Good friend of mine. Well, I say friend. He hates yellow. So when I saw these, couldn't resist. Just for you, Jim. Sorry. Anyway, I digress. Back to the shoelaces. That's how long they are on the ASICs gel hunters. That is how long they are on the ASICs gel extent. Quite considerably shorter. It seems that ASICs have learnt the lesson. And these, as a result of that, I feel a lot safer with when the shoelaces are tied. Good job again ASICs. Well, what's my verdict on these lacing systems? Comfortable, durable, easy to take on and off. The one downside, although they've now corrected it with the extents, shoelaces were just a little bit too long. And because of that, can't say I love it, but I certainly do like the lacing system on these. Any shoe I can get in and out of easily. Yeah, good. Upper part of the shoe. The white mesh, well, it isn't quite the same white as it was when new. Well, okay, well, white's not probably the right word anymore. But then I've never cleaned these shoes, so what can you expect? The mesh also still feels the same as when new. Firm, but with a little give. And whilst the meshing top is still at 90 degree angle to the cloth weave underneath, just like when new, you can now see a pronounced curve in the cloth itself when I put my foot in. It's almost like the shoe upper has moulded to my foot over time. I like that, a customised fit. And when you consider all the stretching that these shoes have had to put up with over the years, apart from that cut or tear that I showed you earlier on in the video, this meshing has held up extremely well. But when I actually put in a bright light, if you can see that there, that's the tear in the mesh I referred to, but there's also another weakness over here. This is on the left foot. I'm going to try it on the right foot. There we go. Just over in the corner, there's another weakness here. Still not a bad performance though for a seven year old shoe. Another bonus with having a mesh topping to the shoe, ventilation. Again, when I'm playing and my feet are moving around, these have been very, very good. My feet don't get hot at all. The only times they've come close to getting hot, that's when I've been coaching and going to tournaments around the country with Toby and Beth. And if you stood around for a long time in warm venues, there's no air going over these shoes. So there's no way you can help cool them. But yeah, that's a very good system. A lot stronger than I thought and comfortable to wear. Not too hot. Again, good stuff. Now I do take good care of my shoes in the sense that I untie them after the use. And if anybody's got any kids, they'll know that they do have a tendency to leave them tied and then just ram their foot in, shove it, cause tears, break down the back of the shoe. But hey kids, why bother when you got the bank of mum and dad behind you, eh? Don't do it. Seriously, get them undone. That's why they're called shoelaces, so you can tie them, undo them. Anyway, back on track. The back on these actual shoes, nice give in there. But it's not to the extent that it doesn't give any support. The backing, don't know if you can hear that. Still solid. Yep, still solid. And I was concerned about the upper foam on these shoes. Getting very thin. Well, it's definitely got thinner. Can't deny that. But I don't have any problem with these shoes digging into my heels and ankles. Sorry, heels? What am I on about? Well, I don't get any problem with these shoes digging into my ankle area. There is just, I don't know if you can see it, there, a bit of a hard ridge, which I think is the heel support around here. 
but again it's high enough up the actual shoe not to make them uncomfortable on my feet and it's, it's the same on that side I don't know if you can see it just in there that hard ridge so again nice and comfortable around the top complements the mesh very very well no breaks in the actual leather synthetic around which joins with the sole very good stuff verdict the upper part of these shoes and the mesh survived the pounding it's had over seven years very very well I like these there's that tear or cut there which I'm not quite sure about did I do that with a cut or not and this foam's worn down a little bit but considering the pounding that's good stuff overall my rating I like them midsole and sole when I first tried these shoes back in 2013 one of the things that I mentioned was that they did start to hurt my feet and at the time I put that down to the rigidity in the actual shoe it was almost like it was fighting my foot my foot wanting to come all the way up because I was on the ball of the feet but the shoes themselves won't go past that point well over time that's not been a problem now if you can see that it's the same with this shoe as well they certainly got some flexibility in the shoe so and that's meant that they've actually become very comfortable one of the consequences of that increased flexibility though seems to be on the right shoe here again it's the right shoe that probably takes more pressure because of the movement in and out at table tennis if you see here along where the tread pattern is can you just see it's cracked and it's just starting to break along there and over time that tread pattern there seems to become a weakness for it it's just right where that toe is really bending look at that that's a pity that but it's not a problem on this side toe wear wise can you just see that there when I first got these there's a pronounced lip and there's still a pronounced lip which well I would expect really because unlike tennis where you can quite often drag your toes when you're serving you won't be doing that in table tennis it's much more on the balls of the feet and sideways movement but even hmm, look at the, the stitching there's still no no breaks in the stitching around there either the whole shoe in terms of construction and that stitching work very very good the arch support on these shoes here and also I didn't actually mention it on the insole but in there you see that nice bit of give in there it's still solid structurally sound nothing loose nothing coming away not on the right nor on the left that arch support system has done an excellent job again happy with that especially as I came from Steger Wasps which for me were far too flat of shoe quite often I came away with Achilles tendon problems so I like an instep and these definitely have a good instep and the rest of the shoe this white part of the shoe I don't know if you can see that I can still push my fingers in all the way around and as I mentioned earlier that little blemish there nothing's come from it still solid happy about that There's a little bit of a nick taken out there but that's probably my fault rather than the shoes because of the way I've looked after them and even where that sole's coming apart there it's not really come apart from the the white upper there so that again that's that's very good but as you move round to the front of the shoe that's where that's quite soft that's quite hard 
and it's the same with the sole as well. That gum coloured sole. That's the bottom. I don't know if you can hear that higher pitch. That, that is hard. That, not as hard. Getting harder again. There's definitely variations in hardness on this sole. Now these variations in the hardness of the, the sole prompted me to get my durometer out and this has a Shure A rating I was originally, just press that to zero, sync it, there we go I was originally bought to help with the table telly sponge rubber hardness tests uh, thank you by the way for everybody that's like the butterfly tests. I will get round to doing that comparison I'm still trying to source some testing equipment and build some myself to make those tests relevant across brands Not far off it Got a robot for it now Tenny Robo, but I'll cover that in another video But back to this yes, I got these out and I started just applying pressure around different parts of the shoe and like I say, please bear in mind, not absolute figures, comparative figures. So, let's have a look. Interestingly, the toe and the heel areas of hardness rating, they're high compared to the rest of the sole. And this was especially at the back of the heel. That's super, super hard. It's more like a plastic than a rubber, it really is. It's probably why I can't use these for driving anymore. Because when you're stepping in and out of the car, there's a chance, or it has actually happened, my foot slipped. And again, when I'm applying my foot to the accelerator, it's the heel that's in, part of the, in contact with the actual carpet on the car. If that slips, I'm either going to jam the accelerator down and run into something, or my foot's going to slip off, and I can end up slowing down quickly without warning, because obviously there are no brake lights coming on, which is dangerous for the person behind me. That is... Quite amazing how those soles have changed in hardness. Certainly from there and there, not so much there. Wow. And it's the same as well when I'm practicing the cone drills. Now admittedly this is outside, but that is actually, surprisingly maybe, where these shoes grip better on a concrete floor. So I'm actually doing them a favour by filming out there. Look what happens. Notice that right foot when I lunge forward. Every so often it slips. Yes, there are little bits of grit and dirt there, but when I'm pushing it, stretching and landing nearer the toe than the ball of my foot, it definitely slips. And whilst I can get away with wearing these outdoors, when I'm doing things like ladder drills, probably because I'm landing on the ball of the feet, which is where these shoes are still the softest, I really wouldn't want to push it too hard. The lack of grip on the soles, especially on the toe and the heels, means if I was to actually use these indoors on a sports centre floor or something like that I'd literally be waiting to fall over and anybody who plays an explosive sport like table tennis or badminton where you're pushing off you really don't want that feeling of wondering when it is you're gonna twist and fall or slip real pity and remember that tray test that I did back in 2013 Asics are behind them now if I just pivot them again Seven years later Same shoe Same bowl Not the same cloth Same tray Let's do the same slip test shall we So that's a quick wipe These shoes on the bottom Give it a good tray I'll do the other one just to make sure it's a fair comparison. First time I've actually done this for a while. Maybe I should have done it sooner. Okay, let's get it out of the way. Put that down there. And I 
have cleaned this tree as well. Let's put them up. Let's see how they compare. Get the shoelaces out of the way so they're not riding on them. And I will overdub or overlay the video I did in 2013 so you'll get an idea of the angle. It'll be slightly different because of the camera angles, but let's see how it does. Woof. Nowhere near as good as they were when they were new. That, ladies and gentlemen, could be what the hardened soles have caused lack of grip. And if you're wondering how they compare to the gel extents, which are newer, well, I'll just do it with one of these shoes. Again, I'll just wipe it clean. Oh, grab all of the tissue to sort it out. I'm just wondering if these are going to be any better. Let's have a look. That's the right shoe. Let's go with the right shoe of the Gel Hunters. Put them in. Let's see which shoe performs better. Are you ready? Actually, I'll switch them around. Look at that high heel. Here we go. There you can see it. Keep going with that one. So it seems obvious that it's the hardening of the sole, here in particular, which has caused a lack of grip in these shoes. Is it? Well actually, no. Again, I got the durometer out and tried it on both the left and right shoe with the gel extent. And if you look at the table, you can see, whilst the Gel Hunter 2s are harder at the extremities of the toes and heels, it's actually the gel extent which has an overall harder sole pattern. So, if it's not the hardness of the sole, which is causing all the problems because we've just seen that these actually grip better on the tray but this part of the shoe which is in contact with the tray most is actually a little bit harder than this part. What is it? Is it the fact that these actually have a complete tread pattern? Can you see there it's almost faded away whereas with these there is a tread pattern there is that what it is? More tread pattern on these gives a better grip and the tread pattern's worn down on these? No, not necessarily. Do you remember my beloved gel velocity tennis shoes? At the time of filming the first video on these shoes, the Gel Hunters, back in 2013, I'd had these shoes for at least five years and I've used these outdoors because I played tennis in them. Well, if it's tread pattern, then these, where there's no tread there and there, you can even see where it's worn away straight through to the white bit there, then you'd expect even the gel hunters to have a better grip on the tray test. So let's see. I used, what did I use last time? Right shoe? Might as well use the right shoe again. Let's give these a little bit of a fighting chance. Now I wore these yesterday and I wear these a heck of a lot. These are my go-to trainers. Still wear them for coaching table tennis. And I certainly wear them for day-to-day -day use around town. Let's just see how these grip compared to the Gel Hunters. There we go. Ah, here's our beloved trait. Don't forget. If we're talking tread pattern, that has more tread than this, sh excuse me, this shoe. Let's get the shoelaces out of the way again. Okay, let's see what happens. Whoa, look at that. It actually overbalanced rather than slid off. That's 
<laughs> that is incredible. Let's just try that with the comparison with the gel extent. Ooh. In fact, I'll even try the left shoe this time. Let's give it a quick wipe down. A quick dry off. So both these shoes have been cleaned in the last few minutes. There's even a stone stuck in the tread pattern there, which if that's raised is going to affect its ability to hold its grip. Okay, let's go for it. Are you ready? Remember, this is this time it's the left. And gel hunts. Oh, look at that. Again, it's overbalanced and it's not slipping off. I know I've not glued it for anybody who says. That's a genuine test. So, what on earth is going on? I also checked on these shoes for the sponge or the rubber hardness underneath. And as you can see, the gel velocity 62 and 64.5 for the white toe as opposed to 64 and 70 for the gel hunters. But let's get down to the gum part of the shoe where it was 75 and 72 for the gel hunters. It's 56 and 60 for the velocities and the heel of the velocity. It's 63 and 63 on the gel hunters and 53.5 and 54.5 on the velocity. So when you look at these gel velocities, these tennis shoes, they've been outside, they've withstood a lot of the elements, a heck of a lot of wear, they're a good five years older than these shoes and yet they grip better even with less tread and when you think about it go back to Formula 1 Grand Prix cars when they're going for the fastest times they'll run slicks like this and the softer the compound the quicker or the sooner the tyres will wear out but the better grip they'll give and these are softer than these absolutely amazing here's a tip for you if you play table tennis, first and foremost, I'd advise you, if you're using indoor court shoes, take them off, put them in your bag, wear another pair of shoes to your actual venue, and then when you get there, take out your table tennis shoes. Protect them from the elements as long as you can. And secondly, if you're like me, and you like a decent trainer to wear around town or for general wearing tear or whatever and you're not a fashion trendy guru yuppie wanting to pay hundreds of pounds on Nike vapor knits or whatever you want to call them go for a tennis shoe in particular a hard, hard court tennis shoe the way you seem to get out of them and the balance between a softer sole or softish sole which lasts and lasts and lasts and gives great grip it's amazing value so much so I even went out and invested in, oh, I hate to admit it, a pair of Nike Vapor Cage shoes. I'll review them at a later date, maybe, maybe not. But I'm not going to be getting them out, not for a little while, because these things, these things are still going strong. Non-marking soles. If you play in a sports venue with a, a decent floor, you're going to have to play with non-marking soles. And if you can see, on the shoe there it says non marking these I've had no problem with whatsoever never left a mark never left a rubber skid mark behind anyway on the floor nobody's ever complained and that doesn't matter whatever floor I've played on that's been the case so in terms of being non marking they say they are and they are good stuff verdict now whilst these shoes are dangerous for me to wear now on common surfaces like carpets and the like and I can't play table tennis in them more I'd have to say that seven years of use out of a shoe is still very very good value 
it's just a pity that whilst the rest of the shoe is still intact and even the sole is, the fact that they've gone hard and lost that grip means that they've become dangerous and I'll probably have to get rid of these now. Don't really want to but don't want to hurt myself either. My overall rating on these, well it would have been easily a love except for that hardness but as it's there I like them. Size. Now the size of these Gel Hunter 2's they're a seven and a half. I don't know if you can see that the actual tongue text is broken up a little bit on there and again I was originally concerned when I bought these that they might be a little bit too big because I'm actually typically a size 7 in trainers but as it turns out that's been a good choice they've been very comfortable and have fitted my wide stubby feet well the width of these shoes when new when measuring at the widest point excluding the actual sole which tapers out which is here and here measured 4.036 inches when I use the calipers or 10.26 centimeters and now seven years later on that same measurement across these two points here well it's 4.045 inches or 10.27 centimeters which is great because with these being half a size bigger than I would normally get if they had got any wider I could possibly have had some trouble with these shoes but I didn't now if you compare that width to these gel extents when I got the calipers on these the measurement was 3.827 inches or 9.72 centimeters wide now bear in mind that these aren't seven and a half these are actually a seven you can only see that as being a US eight but US sizes are a size bigger in terms of number than the UK equivalent so as you'd expect a shorter shoe and also slightly less width in the shoe and they are a snug fit probably a little bit too snug I don't expect to be wearing these out in the street after I finish with them for table tennis just not quite comfortable enough where the extents suffer in terms of width they are a better length for me with the hunter twos having a bit too much room between my toes the top of the toes and the uh, end of the shoe so it's a bit of a trade-off for me do I go for a shorter shoe which fits better lengthways but is just a little bit too snug for me in terms of width or a longer shoe but one that fits me nicely on the width well again with table tennis being side to side movement it's this part of the shoe that I'm really interested in so for me when it comes to indoor court shoes and I'm, if I'm buying ASICs I'm going to go for half a size bigger now if you notice the key words I used then were indoor shoe and the reason I say that is because if I reference these again the gel velocity tennis shoes which are a hard court shoe these are size 7 so they're a little bit shorter than the gel hunters but when I measured the width on them they came in at 3.978 inches or 10.10 centimeters which is wider than the gel extents which are also a size 7 and just a fraction less than seven and a half gel hunters and it's this extra little width as compared to the gel extent that actually make these these size 7 ASICs perfect fit for me but that means there's also a problem which I'll come on to verdict if I go in a shop and I see a size 7 I need to know I'm buying a size 7 and what I found while I'm testing these shoes is not only do manufacturers seem to differ amongst themselves uh, if you apply that to clothes super dry tend to be some people quote two sizes smaller than a UK size but getting it back on these shoes all these shoes are ASICs seven 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 and a half that's definitely the longer shoe but these two both sevens differ in the width 
this is wider than that, which is wider than that. So if I was to buy these at seven and a half and they fitted me, and I was then to go and buy these tennis shoes at also seven and a half, chances are, if we're going on a similar type of comparison to a seven hardcourt shoe, these would be wider still, which would then make them too big. And that's the problem with table tennis equipment too. Butterfly, Donic and all the rest of them come out with a speed control spin ratings. What the hell does that mean? How can you compare it? So come on table tennis shoemakers or shoemakers in general, get a grip of it. I don't know if you remember clocks back in the 70s. As a kid I used to go into their store, put your foot in a box, they brought it down measured that way and they measured that way. You didn't just get a length fitting, you got a width fitting. And that should be the same too with shoes. Don't just quote the length, quote the width at a certain given point on the shoe. And that point should be the same across manufacturers. It should be done. We shouldn't be having to guess the width of a shoe. So, rant over. The one real big downside to these ASICs, and it won't be just ASICs, it'll be other manufacturers too, sizing. I do not like taking shots in the dark when shoes cost a lot of money. Get a proper sizing, a consistent universal sizing, please. My rating, one. Poor. Weight. When I filmed originally back in 2013, the weight of the Gel Hunters was 313 grams for a shoe. And this is the right shoe, I'll just get that out of the way. Turn the scales out. Same scales, by the way. Putting them on, this comes to 312. So they've dropped one gram in weight. And personally, I like uh, a lighter shoe for table tennis. I don't like having to drag my feet around all over the place. Not necessarily the case for tennis where I have your shoes fine, but for a sport like table tennis where there's quick little movements, I like a light shoe. These are excellent in terms of that. So my verdict for these shoes, in terms of weight, love them. Comfort. And now the biggie. Comfort. Let's dive straight in. After seven years use, I'm pretty impressed with these. This lightweight, they've got the stability that I actually need in a shoe. Apart from the wear that you get around here, which I've already covered, they're still comfortable around the upper part of my ankle and upper part of my foot. The meshing still keeps them cool. That instep still gives them some support, which is backed up by this instep here. Everything to do with this shoe has been comfortable. The only downside has been the grip, which I've already covered in some detail, and that really doesn't deal with the comfort side of things. That's more to do with, as I just said, grip. Verdict. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is an easy one. Comfort for me with these. I love them. Overall marking. When it comes to an overall marking for these shoes, I've used my own value proposition calculator. In short, I've ranked each of the qualities which I've considered important against each other to put them in type of a priority list order, and that's given them a weighting. And then I've multiplied that weighting by the rating that I've given them in terms of love, like, okay, poor. So please bear in mind that if you were to do the same type of tests and you, say for example, rated uh, the weight of a shoe higher than its comfort, you'd come up with a different score to me, irrespective of what you've seen on the actual video. And the outcome? These Gel Hunter 2s get a Pathfinder Pro long-term test rating of 87 out of 100, and that means they come highly recommended. I hope this video series will help you decide what footwear meets your needs better and also the type of things that you need to consider. Thank you for watching.